Hello, and welcome to a Morris Federation online event. Um, today we have, I'm Pauline Woods Wilson, and we've got Dennis Taylor and Jerry West helping to host. And I'd like to introduce Stephen Rowley, who's going to tell us about the dances of Catalonia. So straight over to you, Stephen, please. Well, thank you very much, Pauline, and thank you to the Morris Federation. Um, great passion of mine, the, uh, the, the Catalan dances. And so we'll get straight into them. I'm going to do a share screen here. Oh, and uh, as you can see, I've called my talk. Um, on, I'm trying to uh, trying to get my. There we go. OK, you can hear me all right. Yep. I can't see you at the moment, <laughs> so we're just going to be going blind on this. Right, um, I've called it Sticks, Hankers, Baldricks and Bells, um, a, a title really just to get your attention, uh, but we will include that because um, if you talk to most people about um, Spanish dance, they'll say flamenco or Basque dances, <laughs> and um, yeah, a lot of people don't really know Catalonia is in Spain, um, but Catalonia, Catalonia, I say Catalonia, you say Catalonia, um, and we definitely don't say it with a little thing over the top, and um, let's call the whole thing off, yeah. So uh, where is Catalonia? Well, it is the top right-hand corner of Spain, as geographers would have it, and uh, it's an interesting, uh, it's a very old uh, province, and uh, well, it's had an interesting history, uh, in 1443, it was part of the crown of Aragon. Aragon is the area just to the um, uh, west of Catalonia. But you can see that this was a, a large area which incorporated uh, uh, Italy and uh, Corsica, Sardinia and the Balearic Islands. And, uh, and there's been a long history of connection between uh, Italy and this region. Uh, the Romans had um, their second capital there, I Iberian capital, was in Tarragona, which is in uh, in Catalonia. So, um, and it's got an interesting language. It isn't uh, Spanish, Castilian Spanish. Uh, uh, Catalan languages are spoken over this yellow area, which is quite a bit bigger than uh, Catalonia itself, right down into Valencia and across the Balearic Islands, and I think a little bit on Sardinia as well. And it's an interesting language. It's an old language. Um, and if you look at language origins, um, you've got the Catalan here, um, Castilian, which is the main Spanish language. You've probably heard of Basque, Aragon, Galician, and Portuguese, they're the same family group, and Occitan. And Catalan is closer to Occitan and Italian than it is to Castilian. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's got a, an identity that goes back um, over a thousand years uh, as a, sort of, well, 2000 years really. Um, so that's where we are, Catalonia. Um, well, it's gone backwards. Um, so, um, I mentioned hell, bells, hankies, baldricks, etc. <laughs> and uh, we'll just have a look at some of these. Here's some, some photos of dances here. There's a, a six person set with people with sticks wearing bells and uh, they're, they're dancing to just pipe, not pipe and tabba, and uh, wearing whites and red neckerchiefs. And uh, that's a nice set. And uh, yeah, like I said, they've got bells, they've got sticks. And um, here's another group that've got hankies. Um, big hankies in this case but uh, hankies they've got and uh, baldricks yeah you see this quite a lot not just in this part of Spain uh, uh, if you go further across into um, into Castilla Leon you'll see uh, baldricks which look much more like ours. Um, columna sets here we are that's the men of Villanova getting ready to start their dance and uh, pipe and tabba although in this case um, they call it flaviol y bombo there's me at the back trying to read my, <laughs> learn, learn my script for my next presentation. Um, so uh, yeah, there's a lot of things which we would identify with uh, as uh, Morris dancers in Catalan traditional dance. And there are other things. Um, uh, this ribbon dance um, bears some re relationship to, the, um, to what we would think of as Maypole. And they have hobby horses and sword dances and um, guns. 
yeah, that's that's where it differs a little bit. You know, they go off the they go off track there. And uh, giants, splendid giants, and um, dancing balls. Does this make? <laughs> And dragon. Sorry about the noise there. And weird and wonderful things like human towers. And then there are things for which we have no name in the English language. And um, uh, I, oh, we've got some video. So, um, yeah, there's a lot that's similar with, uh, with Morris dancers and a lot of things like the Battle of the Bastons, the stick dancers. But uh, we tend to uh, get our thrill by going dancing at a pub on a Tuesday night, but not them. Their idea of uh, a good night out or a good dance out is dancing down the high street with the population, the entire population of the town out there watching and cheering. And um, I'm going to talk quite a bit about uh, the dance traditions in one town, and that's a place called Villanova Ilo Geltru. Uh, is uh, Barcelona at the top here and Tarragona, and uh, sort of nearly halfway between the two, about 40, 50 miles from Barcelona on the coast. And it, it's, um, it's typical in that it's a small coastal town resort. It's not really the kind of resort that, it's got a lot of hotels, it's got very few hotels, but it's a resort where people from Barcelona and Leda and other inland towns uh, come for, for a day at the seaside. It's got a fantastic railway museum which attracts railway people from around the world. Um, it has some great festivals, in particular their Festa Majeure and Carnival, and a lot of traditional dances. But it's atypical in the fact that it has a huge number of dances dance elements it's like you know in in some towns you might get two or three or even just one uh, kind of traditional dance villanova has got the set um and just a word about this word festa festa major we're going to talk about quite a bit and festa uh, equals the spanish fiesta uh, which comes from feast from which we also get feast of festival festival <laughs> and uh the Festa Major is the major festival uh, in Villanova. Uh, that is uh, the festival or the feast of La Mare de Deu de les Nues, the, the feast of the Mother of God of the Snows or Our Lady of the Snows. And that's on the 6th of August. And uh, we don't really have that concept in England. Of, of the patronal festival. But, you know, just last week we, on March 17th, we had St. Patrick's Day or the Feast of St. Patrick as celebrated in Ireland and wherever Irish people are. And uh, we used to have this situation of having the patronal um, saint. So in, our, in the village I live, uh, it's St. John the Baptist. And his day is June the 24th. And that would have been a public holiday. Uh, the Feast of, of St. John the Baptist would have been a public holiday in our village, you know, 500 years ago. Um, uh, but um, in Catalonia, they really like to make a thing of it. <laughs> uh, their Festa Major, their major festival, uh, has four weeks of celebration. It's a big cultural festival. There's dancing of a social kind. There's rock bands, there's concerts, there's exhibitions. And then there's Del Dia, the day, which is uh, the 6th of August. And it's a, it's a public holiday. So we've lost the idea of a public holiday. We just, um, we just have the national uh, public holidays. But um, in Spain, the day of uh, your patronal festival will be the, a public holiday and there's a grand procession uh, that ends at the cathedral and they have a lot of traditional dances so I'm just going to um, stop share there for a moment so that I can um, 
in the slideshow there and open up this. So um, I'm going to take you through some of these dances <clears throat> and we'll see what uh, we can do. Right, I'm going to start here. I mentioned Bal de Bastons. Bal, Bal or Ball <laughs> de Bastons. Uh, I uh, I often write it B-A-L because English people would, would say ball when they see up there. But bal, bal means dance and bastons mean sticks. And these are the bastonaires of Villanova y la Geltrú. In 1985, it was created by the and posteriormente the Nois to assure the continuity of the The Ball of Bastons of Villanova is composed by 16 people, divided in two files of eight, que evolucionen amb la música d'uns grallers i tabal. El ball consta actualment de nou balls o coreografies diferents. La primera, la segona, la tercera, el correndillo, la pavana. And he goes on to list the, the whole uh, uh, number of, uh, of dances they have. A, a typical Bal de Bastons team will, will have about 20 to 30 dances, pretty much similar to... Um, to uh, uh, a typical Morris side here. Um, so that was Battle of Bass on stick dances, um, stick dances wearing bells. Now bells are an interesting thing and um, uh, this next one is the uh, Caramelles Asuria and uh, this has uh, quite old origins here. <laughs> If I just pause it, you can see they're wearing cascabels. Cascabels means leg bells, pellet bells on the uh, worn on the legs, and uh, this kind of dance, the caramelias, is um, goes back to the 15th century. Uh, we don't know exactly what it looked like in the 15th century, but it's quite an interesting um, uh, uh, dance there. <laughs> Love it, absolutely love it. Um, the next one we'll have a look at is something called Bal de la Valencians, i.e. the dances of Valencia. Um, we're not quite sure whether that means the dan actual dances that come from Valencia or, or the dances uh, making fun of how they think the Valencians dance, we don't know, but still, uh, this is the, uh, uh, I'll show two examples. So it, it, it actually contains an element of um, of the uh, Castellas or the castle building. Here's another group, and these are actually from Villanova, and um, I quite like these. I think I'm going to get my notes. Um, I think, yeah. Well, we'll just watch a bit from here. So uh, they're interesting. They actually use handkerchiefs, and uh, they are um, uh, they're sort of fairly specific now. But we've got some images of Bal de Valencians from uh, an image here 
from 1784. And you can see the dancers here. This, this is a tower. There's one, two, and a child on the top. And you can quite clearly see they're wearing bells. And these ones are both wearing handker carrying handkerchiefs. And there's a shawm player. We come back to that in a moment. Uh, so this is quite an interesting. It's, it's, it's a very distinctive style of drawing as well that uh, we find quite a lot of images, uh, iconography from that period. So that's the Bal de la Valencians and uh, handkerchiefs, right? This one actually comes from uh, this one comes from Mallorca, uh, Bal de las Cosias, which is another name for handkerchiefs. Rather splendid. Uh, a, a bit of a mixture there because they had their baldrics, uh, but they didn't have any bells on, or uh, only one of them did. But they did have handkerchiefs. Now, uh, looking at the German cross, uh, this dance is called Bal de Gitanes, a dance of the uh, gypsies. And you'll see them dressed nicely in their Laura Ashley. As you can see, there's a bit of narrative in their dance uh, and uh, there's a bit of fun. Um, now, this one is a stave dance called Bal de Pastorettes and uh, quite widely, widely found. Again, this one's from Villanova. Oh, what I want you to look at in particular here is that all of these are processional dances. And uh, this one actually shows the procession, the progression going on as you do it.
So um, one thing I particularly like about this is that this chap over on the right here playing pipe and tabro is a very good friend of mine. <laughs> and uh, when I found this video, I was really, very really pleased. But um, <clears throat> these are actually pastorettes. They're supposed to be uh, shepherds, the shepherds dance, and that's why they have the staves. And they carry a water uh, uh, um, holder on their back. But most of them uh, in most towns and villages wear a very shepherd-like shepherd uh costume with with broad hats but these are these are quite um uh quite colorful i think um and here's an interesting dance which is a, um i would say a, uh take something from the from the pastorettes uh side and i will just watch a little bit of it um these um these dancers have are dancing with uh, something called a fascia, which is a, we would call a cummerbund. It's a, a large strip that you wrap around uh, your waist, uh, but they are using it in a different, uh, different way. So, um... So you can see a, a, a bit of a similarity with what they did with the staves. And um, when they're standing up on the top there, they shout out, uh, she was shouting out, Biska Samati, Biska Baldavashes. And uh, Biska means long live, really, kind of a, a thing. Um, anyway. Um, Stephen, uh, can I just yeah? interrupt a second? Yeah. It's just, I don't know. It, 
Um, somebody's reported that the, the videos and stuff is out of sync, and it wasn't for me, but then the sound did go on that one. Okay. So um, let I, me just try the stop share and see yeah. if I'm doing anything. I've got it optimised for sound and yeah. share. So, hmm, don't know. So optimised for video? Optimised for video, share sound, yeah. You've got that. That's, oh, that's the best we can do. Okay. I've got my yeah. settings for minimum latency as well so um yeah it it it, it may just be a, a uh an issue with the system <laughs> yeah okay thanks for checking anyway uh let's move on and um um uh, yeah hobby horses i do like a hobby horse we'll start this um up here So these are called cavaliettes, small horses, and um, they're, yeah, they're one of a whole group of animal uh, um, animal dances that they have, and typically in processions. Uh, we've, uh, we've got a, an interesting <laughs> collection of video here, which I'll have to skip through a little bit, but this is from Villanova, and it shows the, the giants, uh, El Gigantes. I've got to find them first. Um, here we go. I just bring the sound, bring the sound down on that. And uh, you can see the strange sight here of a fish and a, a kind of um, a, a drinking vessel <laughs> uh, processing. Processional fish are a thing and they go back a very long way. And uh, we also got things like the mule. The processional mule. <laughs> Bring the sound up a bit. So this is from um, the start of the procession. They're just setting out from the town hall, town square, and then they go off on the big procession. Oh, disaster! We've lost Stephen. <laughs> That again. Oh. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, we're obviously getting, there's probably millions of people zooming something today and uh, <laughs> that's it. So, uh, like I say, this is, this is the giants um, starting the procession. Most of the people in the town will actually be in the high street waiting for them to come by. <laughs> So this is their warm-up dance. Stephen, your screen share has broken, so you'll oh, need to restart it. Sorry, yeah, obviously. Here we go. And I'm going to optimise and share. Share. There we go. Right, are we there now? Lovely. So, oh! <laughs> That's what happens when you do that. It puts an ad in. <laughs> Booking a oh, no, good home grief. Means having room to spread I set everything up so it wouldn't the do the wouldn't do the ads. So just say here, this is their warm-up dance at the beginning of the procession before they get out into the crowds. And you can see musicians down here. Um, uh, this strange instrument is called a gralia. This is a kind of shawm and there's a drum there. We've had pipe and tabba before and some bagpipes. <laughs> And I just move on. Uh, 
and these are different giants going different giants going down the narrow streets. into the cathedral but still we'll stop there so uh, yeah giants are a, a, a big thing there um but uh, there are even more bizarre things that uh, that you find there and um i particularly uh, uh, love this this is a, a video made by uh Aish diary which is the um which is local local tv uh service and um yeah or uh, newspaper TV sort of thing goes online as well as paper and um, I, I think it lasts about three minutes but um, in the in an evening before Del Dia they have uh, Cora Foc or Nida Foc which is uh, Night of Fire and uh, this is quite interesting their festivals are quite inclusive and they tend to um, to get the uh, the tearaway kids involved and engaged in doing something in the community uh, they might uh, invite them to join the diables the devils and so the dancers in uh, in this event are uh, are called the the devils and there's a lot of fireworks and dragons and um, it is quite spectacular and uh, quite chaotic at times as well. So this is, um, I think I was there for this one <laughs> with my brother <laughs> and, and family. And uh, I've still got clothes, which have got lots of holes in them. Uh, so we'll watch, a, um, we'll watch this, it's, it is spectacular. So that one's quite uh, an interesting uh, one, and it, it in. Lenovo Pro. You're oh no! Stop! <laughs> um, 
Um, so that's quite an interesting one. The, um, uh, there's a lot going on in there. Uh, you know, there's several giants. I mean, there's several dragons and lots of devils. And uh, they're actually all in lots of groups. And one of the features of these events is that in order to make a really spectacular um, uh, Corifoc, they will invite the, uh, the dragons and the devils from other parts of uh, Catalonia to take part in it. So, you, OK, you, 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 join the, you join the devils or you're part of the dragon team. You don't just get to do your own one. You go and visit all these other places and you're the centre center of attention in lots of places. And it's, it's quite interesting. There's a lot of fuss about um, uh, insurance for various things like giants. And you know, uh, I know Lewis and, uh, uh, have problems about insurance for their bonfire uh, celebrations. And here um, in Catalonia, there is a there is a, a debate about it, but the benefit of what goes on in the Corifoc is quite uh, interesting. Uh, I was t talking to the guy who runs the, the Diablers in Villanova, and he's an ex-convict, and he wants to stop kids going the same way. And so he recruits, he, he recruits them quite young, and they want to be in it, and they want to be part of it. And so uh, in doing so, if they're going to be in it and stay in it and and perform, they've got to conform. They've got to, uh, you know, be aware of the safety and the discipline and all, all that stuff. And so they get to be part of the most exciting part of the festival. Um, but at the same time, they're learning to be part of the community and taking responsibility and the like. So it's a very interesting thing. And they even work with the young ones. There's a there's little little levels as well, Diablitos as well. Um, uh, a couple of things we have, let's cover a couple more things that we haven't done so far. Um, and, uh, many of you might have come across this, which is the, um, uh, let me share this. So, uh, this is the human castles and, um, this, uh, this clip is from the old town, medieval town of Vals and, um, these are the young, <laughs> the young, <laughs> the young Castellias. There's the young Castellias and the old Castellias, and you can tell them by the colour of their shirts. Um, they both wear red shirts, but as you can see here, there's some of them are bright red and some of them are faded red. And the young ones are the bright red, <laughs> and, the, and the old ones are the faded red. But they have to come together to work. They competition between them. In the town of Vals, you are either a young or an old. You, they're completely divided. Um, family loyalties going back a couple of hundred years but to do a difficult tower they have to come together because it takes thousand people some friend for a very big tower this one will involve you know um there's a, there's a few hundred people down there and it's not a particularly high tower they go up to you know 11 stories uh this one is only going up to eight stories but it's going up to eight stories with just two people so they can do 11 stories with four or five people in the tower, but um, this is an eight by two, and so it's particularly unstable. There is no verbal communication in this. Uh, they mill around in the middle, the, the, the key people at the bottom, the, the, the key four or five at the bottom, uh, decide there's enough people around. Uh, there's a signal from the, from the captain who's standing probably about, 40 feet away and they start forming it and then uh this is uh when they get to this is they've got a, a, a planter which is the ground floor then one two three and when they get to the third floor if it isn't looking good it doesn't go ahead if it is looking good the um captain signals to the musicians and they start playing that tells everybody it's it's a goer So they're waiting for it. It's a goer.
<clears throat> so the whole thing only takes a couple of minutes and it is time limited because the guys at the bottom who are the props who st hold it up they start running out of oxygen and so it has to happen in a very short space of time to work and um i've been there <laughs> in that crowd it's incredible atmosphere um so um i've got one more to show you let's um let's go to here and <laughs> there are plenty more dances which I could go through there's an enormous number of dances and uh, um, so I thought I'd have a, uh, a little quick summary of uh, their dances and how they're performed and um, they are very much uh, tied to the ecclesiastical, ecclesiastical calendar so they aren't like us that would take a go out on our dance out night on a Tuesday night to a pub they just don't do that they will dance within a particular context of an event either that event mostly it's around the ecclesiastical calendar particularly the festa majeure so but they okay you've only got one festa majeure in your town but we might have two in fact <laughs> villanova's got three i think but um you also get invited to uh other towns and for instance battle of the bastons um we were invited uh i, I with one of my Morris sides to visit a town that was having its uh, 20th anniversary of its Battle de Bastons. Um, no, its 10th anniversary of its Battle de Bastons. So it brought in 10 uh, sides from outside um, outside the town, including us. So we were, uh, we were a real novelty there. But they also have things like ring meetings called Travadas, which are, uh, are, are gatherings. And I think... Uh, um i attended i've attended a couple of them but one of them were the gloucestershire morris men and i think there were 78 um balabaston sides there all gathered together it was, it was quite exciting and um they identified with us and we identified with them straight away in, in how we're doing it and what we're doing 
it's just the context is very different. Um, in their current form, in this processional type of setting, uh, or the way the Fest Majeure works, uh, we definitely have um, um, evidence of it being in the similar style from the 18th century. But a lot of those things go back further. And something like the cascabels, the, the ankle pellet bells, uh, there's evidence of them being used in dances in the 15th century uh, by the Caramellis, the group that I showed near the beginning. And they're not considered to be folk dances. So they are ballas popularis, uh, the popular dances. And uh, you don't, I, I have been to one or two things where there, have been, there are folk dance groups, uh, mostly circle dancing, which you get circle dance groups all over the, all over the, the world. Uh, but um, yeah, this is this is this is definitely popular. It's you don't go to a folk festival to see this kind of dance. Uh, this is in the popular dances of the thing. And um, so why why do they exist like that? Well, it is a Catholic country, and those feasts, uh, those church festivals, uh, uh, exist and continue to exist. Um, we lost them a long time back. With the Reformation, um, and it is a long-standing tradition of of celebrating those things, which definitely goes back five hundred years at least. But also, it's an issue of identity. During the Spanish Civil War, uh, Franco sought to suppress um, local identities, uh, and the Catalans uh, were very severely suppressed their language and their culture was banned these festivals these dances these tunes these the instruments themselves were banned uh, so during the transition um as franco became ill and and eventually died uh, the catalans brought this back in bucket loads and there was a huge revival um when we compare it to uh uh to our <laughs> situation pre-reformation we had dedication day processions and uh, we've got lots of documentary evidence of these uh, containing giants and Morris dancers and hobby horses. Uh, there was, I was involved in the recreation of one for St. Lawrence's Day, the 500th anniversary of it in Reading. Uh, and the, the information in the accounts of the church was for that dedication day procession. They had to pay threepence or one and threepence for the a new hoop for the dragon and uh, um, so much for ale for the Morris dancers and so much for the minstrels. And um, this was also a feature of the uh, some of the civic events. So in Chester uh, during the Midsummer Watch, uh, which was a you know a, an event uh, involved um, uh, handing over the keys of the city to the the waits really what the, the watch the watch who looked after the city at night time um, and uh, in that procession they had four giants one unicorn one dromedary one loose a loose uh, was a was a a pike a fish uh, one camel one dragon spitting balls of sulphurous fire six hobby horses and 16 naked boys painted black as devils. So you can see what we're seeing today in Catalonia, uh, there are definite um, uh, uh, you know, parallels with what was happening here before the Reformation, but come 1600, that was banned. And uh, a lot of the things we had were banned. The, definitely before then, the church processions, dedication day processions, uh, were by and large banned. Uh, certain things were allowed to carry on, but um, Morris dancing, along with other things, got kicked out of those uh, those uh, contexts. Um, a couple of observations. Um, I work with researchers in Catalonia, looking at their background of things, and the ankle bells appear to arrive in both our country and their country in the 15th century and this was probably to involved with something called moresque which we first find in the uh what's now austria and southern germany northern switzerland area 
uh, a performing troupe of exotic dancers wearing bells and dancing to pipe and tabba, um, doing extraordinary things. And there, a lot of them are in Asian costume. And we know that well before that, bells were, ankle bells were a, a thing <laughs> for dance <clears throat> and depicted in iconography coming from before that period in Asia, um, Indian subcontinent and Southeast Asia. So it could be that they came in at that point. <clears throat> uh, there's a similar context for uh, the dances that we see in um, in Catalonia now to what Morris was in the 16th century. Uh, but uh, we had the Reformation, banned the church processions. There was a shift to civic processions and many cities continued like Salisbury, uh, which is why we've still got the giant in uh, of, in Salisbury. Did I have that on the previous one? No, I didn't. Uh, somewhere I've got a giant picture. Um, and um, uh, the Lord Mayor's procession in uh, in London had two giants, and uh, which were destroyed in the Second World War Blitz. Uh, they did rebuild giants, but they're somewhat different now. Uh, just an observation on the music. Uh, Flaviola Bombo. That is the um, uh, pipe and tabba there. The Sac de Jumex is the bagpipe. Sac de Jumex, literal translation is bag of groans. And uh, this here, I think, is a Gralia Basha, uh, but it might be a Tarotta. And uh, they're both kinds of shawm. And these instruments were the instruments of the town waits in, uh, in England in the 15th, 16th century. They would, they're loud outdoor instruments. The town waits would be the watch keepers. They would watch keep at night, which would mean they'd be available during the day to play for the processions and for the um, you know, official events and dignitaries and the like. Um, where are we here? And about how it works in um, Spain, why these dances and this tr these traditions continue so strongly. Uh, the Festa Major is the biggest show in town. People get the day off, they go and watch it. Children grow up wanting to be in it. It's a bit like X Factor or, or um, whatever, Fame Academy. The children want to see themselves doing it. And uh, they've built a sustainable model, which ensure it continues. And they create the performance opportunities for it. So it's not a case of just going out and dancing, busking, going to a pub and dance. They actually create performance opportunities, which uh, the public come to. Their model is quite interesting. At the top, they have the Agrupacio, which is the large, uh, which is the umbrella organization. And that is a funded cultural body within the town, uh, which has its own premises and uh, they organize the performances. For the dancers, and we'll take Bal de Bastons, the, the stick dance as a, an example, they recruit at school and it's an after school club. They will recruit for a short while, they will form a cohort of children of around the same age. These children get to perform at a special festival, which is uh, the saint's day of another um, uh, church in the in the town, St. Anthony Abbot. So they get to perform in their own one. And also they get to perform uh, not in the main procession at the main festival, Festa Major, but in the weeks leading up to it. They also get to visit and perform in other festivals around. So they've got the performing opportunity and that is a real um, uh, encouragement for them. So Having formed that cohort, that cohort performs as a team and they grow older together. When they get to the age 25, their job is to train the next generation and they start up the next cohort in the school after school clubs. When they get to my age, <laughs> well before they get to my age, they retire from the dance. Um, and their job is to run the organization, to run the Agripasio, to run uh, Val de Bastons, to enable the younger cohorts to do the fundraising, organize the travel, the costumes, the venues, and to organize those performance opportunities. Uh, so they take on that, that, um, uh, that role. 
and it's it's a really good model and i've seen it working in other towns in catalonia uh, it's not it's not the same in all towns <laughs> some towns have difficulties but most towns it's a really really popular thing and um yeah, and I get, I'm lucky I get invited over every year. I've been going uh, every year for 20 years now and uh, get to play in their festivals. Sometimes they're not quite sure. Is that a D pipe he's playing or is it a C pipe? <laughs> I don't know, but still. And I get to play for the Giants and all that kind of stuff. So it's great fun and uh, I can well recommend it. I've taken several Morris sides over and uh, the, the town I've been talking about, Villanova, um, they also have a link with uh, Winterbourne, Motten, uh, Winterbourne Down Morris Men. Uh, this picture here is in Arbusiers, which has a Pipe and Tabber Festival, which is a sister festival to the International Pipe and Tabber Festival, which I set up um, 23 years ago, good grief, <laughs> and um, which is how I got to be invited there. So, Visca Catalunya! Thank you, Stephen. Have we got anything in the chat? Any questions? Um, well, I think there was, but I think it disappeared. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, Peter Baron, where's Peter? I'm I'm here. It, it, it wasn't it wasn't a question. I just made a a comment that your your video of the Cossier in Manicor that we were there the year later. So um, I, we videoed them. We followed them for the whole route. Did you follow them? For the whole route or? no 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 i've uh, i've never seen them actually all oh, right um well i've seen i have seen a cossier uh, but um uh yeah so that, that they, were, they were just youtube clips i just went oh, right. okay no we, we recognize quite a few of the dancers on that yeah. <laughs> well, um no that, that their route it's more like following someone like abram round they're going from house to house and the people have got tables of drinks set up and they go yeah. to the next house and it it's not a big fest festival thing at all no uh, but they've they no. got twice they go out on, on on the festas mayor yeah uh, but the time we saw them was they're, they're very close together the other one's 15th of may which is one of the religious holidays and we saw them on that one and um and they, they end up dancing inside the cathedral at the end um yeah. no so I've, there's video of it if you want to see the whole oh wow well. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll send you a link if you want i yeah. would love to see that and uh, i thought you i thought you would be, be you'd be in here with this because it, 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 you know, i know your interest in in these dances the um yes they so when i've been before um to, to various things is if i take a team over with me then the the hosting side will organize a day where they will go and visit people who have been important in their um in their history former dancers and they will go and visit and dance them and like you say outside there'll be refreshments uh wine and food and things and then you dance on to the next one and on around yeah with the, with the costia you've got you've got the the woman who's dancing and certainly when they got to some of the places they, they stopped at uh, someone came out from the house and did the woman's role. She was presumably <laughs> a former, uh, yeah. or a former dancer. Yeah, yeah. So it's a quite an interesting house visiting tradition. It reminds me of, um, you know, there's quite a lot in other parts of Spain and also around the Mediterranean of these house visiting uh, traditions, which are in the lead up to the main Festa Major. And uh, and uh, I've been to quite a few, and also around Carnival. So those house visiting traditions in Carnival are rather like um, I used to play music for the Red Horse up in uh, down in Padstow. And in the morning we would go and visit uh, and dance for uh, people connected with the with the Red Horse team uh, up in the council estate and things like that. <laughs> well, on, on an entirely different matter. <laughs> um, you're saying that the, the, the religious element disappeared in the Reformation. Uh, but uh, wouldn't you count rush carts with their associated Morris dancers right, as yeah. being associated with with a religious festival? Yeah, no, I would. Yeah, and, and that carried on to the 1800s. That's right. And uh, there were, by and large, uh, you know, the, the Puritans did try and stamp it out. And uh, if you, uh, I really like um, uh, um, John Forrest's book where he describes how, uh, you know, the, First of all, you get lots of references to 
uh, Morris in that church context in those processions and there's loads more that aren't in his book that he just didn't have space to put them in and then that happens up until the late 16th century and then from there on most of the references to to Morris are about prosecutions yeah uh prosecutions of clergy allowing the Morris to dance in, in their in their events and things um and it's quite interesting that somewhere like Salisbury it switched over and it was the guilds the guilds were already running the procession for the church and they just made them into a uh a, a civic procession rather than a religious procession because everybody loved it that was the big day that was the big day you know uh but yeah the puritans what did they ever do for us right? <laughs> well I'll let someone else say something <laughs> so oh yeah sorry i tried to send you a message stephen um, thank you so much that was so interesting um the message didn't go um we have a link and in fact dennis and pauline have come with us with a town up in further up near the pyrenees called sosona um and they have the festa major and they have their uh, their giants yeah and the core fog but their bigger festival is for carnival so you know yeah. just 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 recently and um, some of the footage you showed us, we've been there, we've stood underneath <laughs> um, many times and it is, it's amazing. Um, they have a bit of dancing, but not as much as you've shown us. So I'm really excited to go to other towns now and to, to see, more, see more dancing. Um, well, yeah, that, I mean, that is the interesting thing is that um, the north of Catalonia, the, 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 um revival wasn't as strong okay so i know you and pauline dennis went to girona and girona has i go to their festival every year there's santa major of san narcis uh, and i love it um but it doesn't have anywhere near as many elements traditional elements in it um because for some reason and it may have been political leanings you know as so they've always been seen as the ones which have have stayed and their festa majeure is more modern uh you know so it's an interesting thing but so sonna this lunchtime i was eating uh, my lunch with my salsona knife <laughs> because oh, right. salsona is famous for making wonderful yes. carbon steel knives we have and... many of them well <laughs> yeah. we have about 10 of them <laughs> yeah and uh, yeah. they are my favorite knives yeah yeah um, they're very um, good but 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 lovely yeah so that that's the thing and um yeah if you want knives like that you have to go to salsona then <laughs> yeah and did um pauline and dennis tell you that when we went to girona um Pauline made contact with the Castilla group who kindly invited us along and we we saw their practice um both um Pauline and I actually had I think I just had one person on me because my back isn't good but <laughs> Pauline actually had several people on top of her um it was it was fabulous but it was um it's so serious it's like yeah. you say it's not they're not messing around in any way um it's very um carefully controlled and they practice, I think it's at least twice a week um, in the season to be able to do that. Yeah, it, it is spectacular. Did yeah. did they have one of those um, buildings with lots of nets up at different, were you in that, in one of their buildings, the tall buildings that got yes. lots of nets? Yeah, because yeah. yeah. in, in uh, Bordegasas de uh, Villanova, um, uh, you know, it's an old town and <laughs> you go to their, their they've, they've got a bar. Uh, which is in a more modern building but then they've got this other building the practice hall which you go into and it's just part of this big terrace and you go in there and uh, you, you go into an ordinary door through into this building and all the floors have been ripped out <laughs> it's just got all these, all these nets going up to the fifth floor or whatever and um yeah and there's a lot in it isn't there yes and lots of wall bars as well which they yeah. used um for the younger um you know and the beginners um yeah. they start with working up the wall bars which is which is quite interesting yeah. Um, yeah. if anybody goes i'd recommend it because they've you know our experience was they're very welcoming for people who are interested yeah girona has the most bonkers castellias uh, tradition of <laughs> uh so in the middle of the town there's that great 
there's those that flight of steps. Oh, they take the, them up the steps, don't they? Yes. And yeah, and they get on the on the shoulders and they make a pillar, yeah. which is a single thing, mm. three high, and they walk it up the steps mm. all the way to the top. Mm. Um, those steps that that big uh, beast with the multi heads was coming down. Um, I, I I was trying to find another clip. I've got another clip uh, <laughs> where they where they're processing to the final countdown. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Very, really interesting. We ought to arrange a joint trip, trip out there. Oh, we're all going to go. Yes, yes, yeah, we'll yeah, go. No yes. <laughs> right. So I, I'm going at the end of October, beginning of November this year. So if you want to come. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> I usually take I usually take people over each time because we we I try and take something different every time. Um, I, 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 when I first went and suggested it, they said, "Oh no, our you know our our festa majeure is completely Catalan, and you can't you can't have something which isn't from outside the town in the main procession." But actually, they then thought about it and they've invited us to be in their festa majeure processions um uh various places but uh, arbusia is where i go to where that picture was with me at the end um pipe and tabber festival and i take something different every time so we've taken play for dance and um uh, early morris and um uh, morris jigs uh, uh we've uh, we've done very small <laughs> sets i'd love to take a full set of morris dancers doing something like um Sherborne Constant Billy because that would you know they would identify with that so so well and um I quite like to take my giant I've got a giant I quite like to take my giant with me <laughs> David Moore's signaling because I think he thinks you're taking Adderbury that Adderbury yeah we've got Adderbury down to go and um uh that would be fantastic if we could uh you know if we could get that going <laughs> they, they haven't hi David <laughs> Hi, hi, Stephen. Yeah, well, I think we've we've got enthusiasm. We've got at the moment. We've got um, myself and Stephen Watts, who uh, can also play a pipe and table, play a few notes on the pipe and table. But he's also got bagpipes, as I have as well. So I think we've certainly got a bit of music there. We've got uh, the Momo. We've got either six or seven dancers, and the kind of the cut off thing is if we can get eight dancers, we're up for it. Uh, right. Just to, to, to allow for some injuries. So I think we're on for it, Stephen. So, so yeah. It sounds good. We'll, so I, I've, so I've, we'll I've, keep in touch. But, but <laughs> I know my side are very keen to go. So, so yeah. So I'm hoping. I'm hoping that they um, you know, they're, they're they're talking about what it, how it's going to be this year, because they've had some, um, you know, they they did a sort of a kind of quasi uh, uh, hybrid festival last year, but. Um, I think uh, I think we'll be on this year if it, if it's if it's going. Yeah. <laughs> well, has anybody else got any other questions for Stephen? No. Any comments? No. Okay. Right. Well, it's a wrap then. Thank you very <laughs> much, Stephen. Oh, can you just everybody unmute yourselves? Give me a few seconds, and then we'll give Stephen Rowley a round of applause. <laughs>